Innovative bikes and equipment played a crucial part at the Tokyo Paralympic Games just a few weeks ago, so it felt only right that we take a closer look at some of these amazing bikes and equipment that helped these athletes win gold medals. The bikes we see at the Paralympic Games are so unique to the athletes, from two-wheel bikes to three-wheel bikes to tandems and hand cycles. And the Paralympic Games just goes to show there is a bike out there for everybody. Many Paralympic athletes will ride a very typically normal looking bike, but depending on their impairment, the bike will be adapted to assist them. But first up, we thought we'd take a deep dive into the bike of 17 times Olympic gold medalist, Sarah Storey. Sarah was born without a functioning left hand, and that puts her in the C5 category. For those of you who are unfamiliar with how the categories work, C1 is for athletes with the most severe impairments, and C5 is for athletes with minimum impairments. So the main challenges Sarah faces are with handling, braking, and changing gear. Only having the ability to do all this with one hand can be very difficult. But not only are these athletes incredibly good at riding bikes, they're also pretty clever too. So we did some investigating into Sarah's bike and this is what we found. So on a road bike, she uses a brake splitter that gives the cables out to the front and rear brake from the right hand shifter, meaning that all the braking she does is on the right hand. And then on the handlebars, on the drops, you can see there's a little adaption on there, a little custom made thing for her to put her wrist on. And then on the hoods, she's got a nice little strap that I'm guessing that she can strap her wrist in for when she's on the hoods to make things a little bit more comfortable for her. And the road bike Sarah was using was a top of the range Boardman road bike that she's personally sponsored by. But not only does Sarah dominate on the road, she also does so on the track too. Now we all know that track bikes are completely different to road bikes. We haven't got brakes to worry about or changing gears. But one thing Sarah does have to overcome is the standing start in the individual events. So all the events Sarah does on the track are from an individual standing start where it requires, you know, a good grip on the bars and you throw your bike from side to side and balancing. So on the track, Sarah rides a British Cycling UKSI Volume 2 bike with exactly the same frame, forks and cranks that an able-bodied athlete would use. The only difference on Sarah's track bike is the base handlebars. And if we take a closer look here, we can see on the left that she has a custom-made adaption there to rest her wrist in so she can get the best out of her standing starts. And then once Sarah's in the skis and in that aerodynamic position, it all kind of looks the same as an able-bodied athlete was used, just resting the elbows on the pads and then with the hands up front. So I actually went and did a GCM Plus documentary all about Sarah's story. So if you haven't checked that out yet, yeah, make sure you do over on the GCN app. She is an incredible athlete that has achieved so much. Next up is Jody Cundy, and he has some very fancy prosthetic legs. He is also known for having a new custom-made and custom-painted leg for every major competition he goes to. And one of my favorite ones he's had done is the one he had for the London 2012 Olympic Games. It was, on the front it had a nice Union Jack in a different shades of blue, and then on the back it had all the major medals he'd won in his career. So the most recent leg he had done for the Tokyo Olympic Games incorporated the Shanghai wave and the Japanese characters for family as he said that was a nice way to bring his family along on the journey with him as they couldn't be there due to the restrictions this year. So nice little personal touch. So another interesting thing about Jody's leg is just the bottom half of the leg. It is just a carbon blade, super aerodynamic and efficient. And then just at the bottom, just a standard cleat. And I actually spoke to Jody and he said the only difference on his bike compared to an able-bodied athlete is the cranks. So on the prosthetic side, he'd have a 165 crank. And then on the other side, he'd have a 170. Now you may recognize Jacko from a video Hank did with him a few years ago at the Help for Heroes HQ. Since then, he's gone to win two goals and a bronze at the Paralympic Games. He's lost his left arm from the elbow down and uses a carbon prosthetic arm while riding. And he has adapted this for his bike handling needs, but also he's done it from a very aerodynamic perspective as well. 
When wanting to be more upright on the bike, Jacko has a carbon prosthetic arm that's attached to the top of the handlebars. And at the end of Jacko's prosthetic arm, there's kind of like a round loop that loops over the handlebars. And this secures Jacko into the bars and allows him to leave the bike and allows him to then attach her on the bike when he needs to. But during the Tokyo Olympics, Jacko was riding in a very aerodynamic TT position. And in order to get nice and low and aerodynamic on the bike, the team created a much shorter prosthetic arm that was attached to where the armrest would be. And this allows him to keep an aerodynamic position whilst being secured to the bike. You also see tandems at the Paralympic Games, and now these are for the visually impaired riders. And on the front, you'll have the sighted rider, and they're actually called the pilot, a very fancy name for a bike rider. And then on the back is the stoker, and that's the visually impaired rider. So the tandems you see at the Games are kind of the same as any other tandem with two town tubes, and they have to be insanely strong to have the weight of an extra rider, and then the amount of watts some pressure these riders put through the pedals, they need to be extra strong and sturdy. And I've actually been riding on the velodrome behind a tandem before, sprinting, and I actually could see the bike kind of flexing, and that bike clearly wasn't strong enough for the riders, because the bike shouldn't do that. So they need to be really strong for the riders. This is a UKSI bike, and these are the bikes that the British Cycling Para team use. They've been specially designed for the athletes and incredibly aerodynamic. So the front of a tandem kind of looks like any other typical aerodynamic bike with the nice aerodynamic handlebars and forks. But as we moved to the back of the bike where the visually impaired rider sits, you can kind of see where they position their hands. It kind of goes in between the seat post of the rider in front. and. It's probably not the most pleasant place to sit or directly behind another rider, but it is the most aerodynamic. I was also intrigued to see what kind of times a tandem at riders do compared to able-bodied riders. So I did a bit of research and I found some time. So the tandem riders, they have got, you know, the extra weight of having two people, but then you've also got the extra power compared to the able-bodied rider. So the times were for the tandem, um, was 58 seconds point zero, so pretty quick for a standing start. And then the men's world record held by Francis Purvis from France is 56 seconds point three. So not really much in it. You know, the tandem riders have all that extra weight to get up to speed and get out the start gate. So it's quite impressive, I think. Next up, handbikes. Now, handbikes are for athletes with impairments to the lower part of their body and their legs, and they'll use a handbike. And these look very much like recumbents, in my opinion. The riders kind of lie down, and they've got two smaller wheels at the back and then a bigger wheel at the front. So the riders will have the gears on their handlebars, and unlike a bike where the pedals turn like this, the handbike turns like this. The brakes on the handbikes are also found on the handlebars, but on some bikes, they, the riders actually have to stop pedaling and move their hand to a different position on the bike to pull the brake. But this is obviously you know, a waste of time. The, the reaction isn't as quick if you need to brake suddenly. So now more handbikes are having the brakes on the handlebars. But I'm not gonna go into too much more detail about handbikes, because we actually have a whole video on hand cycling coming soon, and I'm actually gonna have a go myself. It's amazing how technology, 3D printing and scanning has changed para sport and para cycling. It allows athletes to perform and be more comfortable riding at the highest level from 3D printed handlebars and adaptions to the bike, as well as the prosthetic arms and legs too. And it'll be interesting to see where this technology takes us in the future. I hope you found this video interesting, taking a look at some of the tech that goes into para cycling. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up.